Huntington's and Parkinson's. What's the difference? Meet Sarah and Jade. They've both come here today because they've been diagnosed with a neurodegenerative disease. Although both of their diagnoses stem from their difficulty with movement, Jade has been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, while Sarah has been diagnosed with Huntington's disease. How can these seemingly similar symptoms lead to completely different diseases? And how different are they really? There may be more to understanding these diseases than we realize. Let's talk to Jade and Sarah so we can find out more. Hi there, I'm Jade. I was around 60 years old when I first started experiencing symptoms of my disease. One of the first things I noticed were resting tremors in my hands and legs. Even when I wasn't doing any tasks, my hands and legs would shake. Soon, I started to develop rigidity in my muscles, which made them stiff and inflexible and hard to move. I also experienced what my doctor called bradykinesia. This is characterized by slow movement as my body's ability to move swiftly on command was lowered. Based on these symptoms, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I know that Parkinson's is considered to be a neurodegenerative disease, but I'm not quite sure what that really means. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I've been experiencing the symptoms of my disease since I was about 45 years old. Some of the main motor symptoms I experience are dystonia, which are excessive and involuntary muscle contractions. I also experience chorea, which are abrupt and involuntary movements. Chorea can develop into a more extreme symptom known as bolism, where limbs are flung around violently. I always knew there was a chance I would be developing this disease because my father suffered from it as well. I have Huntington's disease, which is a dominant genetic disorder caused by a defective gene on chromosome 4. It leads to a defective protein called Huntington. Even though I knew this diagnosis was a possibility, it's still scary to think about. I know I need to learn more to understand my disease properly. Let's take a closer look at how each disease causes their respective symptoms. Both Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease follow the same motor circuit and utilize the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is composed of several nuclei that are responsible for monitoring motor movements. It is malfunctions in this area that cause the motor symptoms of each disease. The motor circuit starts at the cerebral cortex. It decides on what movements to engage in and sends signals to the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia will then decide the who, what, when, where, and how of each movement. It will map out the muscles involved, their movements, how it will be initiated, and how it will end. This is done in the form of positive and negative signals. Once this is established, these positive or negative signals are sent to the thalamus. The thalamus will combine all of the signals received from the several nuclei of the basal ganglia and send it to the motor cortex. The motor cortex will then put these signals into action by transmitting the signal to each muscle through the spinal cord and nerves. So the difference between the two diseases occurs in the basal ganglia. In Parkinson's disease, there are too many negative signals generated in the basal ganglia, leading to difficulty initiating and carrying out movements which can be seen in tremors. In Huntington's disease, there are too many positive signals generated. As a result, there are excessive large movements that are uncontrollable. Both diseases affect the basal ganglia, but different nuclei within it, leading to different symptoms as seen in Jade and Sarah. That was definitely a lot to condense, but hopefully the differences in the pathways are a bit easier to follow. Now that we have a better understanding of both Huntington's disease and Parkinson's disease, let's move on towards the different methods of treatment for both diseases. While there is no known cure for Parkinson's disease yet, there are a variety of treatments that can help control the symptoms. Jade's primary course of treatment follows a deep brain stimulation. In this course of treatment, the patient undergoes surgery, 
where a surgeon places thin metal wires in the brain. These wires send electrical signals to the brain in order to mitigate some of the motor symptoms that are associated with Parkinson's. Because of the surgery, Jay does not need as much medication. However, deep brain stimulation is not made for all individuals. There are other forms of treatment available if a patient determines that they want to follow another course, including levodopa, MAO inhibitors, dopamine agonists, and anticholinergic agents. Let's now take a look at Sarah's primary form of treatment. Similar to Parkinson's disease, there are no set treatments for Huntington's, but modern medicine has found a way to lessen some motor symptoms as well as psychiatric symptoms. In order to lessen her muscle movement, Sarah uses tetrabenazine. Tetrabenazine is a drug known to suppress the involuntary muscle movement and the rhythm movements in an individual. This drug helps Sarah go on with her daily life without having as much interference as the tetrabenazine helps to lessen chorea, which is associated with Huntington's. Other patients can help with their psychiatric symptoms by taking antipsychotic drugs as well as drugs for depression. However, there are not many treatment choices for an individual looking to mitigate their motor symptoms that are associated with Huntington's. I'm really glad we live in today's society, Jade. Every day I hear that there are new scientific advances that are completely changing modern medicine as we know it. I completely agree with you, Sarah. I think the next steps we can look forward to are to keep researching different treatment methods for both Huntington's and Parkinson's and find a course of treatment for both that fits the need of every patient and hopefully a cure soon enough. Thanks for joining us today.